anatomy one. So I will cover skeletal muscles, um, muscles, muscular system, and a little bit over anatomy and physiology. Okay, let me go ahead and share my screen um, here. So body regions to remember. So we have our upper arm. So in the beginning of this class, we learned that a lot of these terms are Latin or um, Greek terms. So remember, this is like your brazo, so your brachial. So think of your strong biceps. It's your upper arm, okay? Your femoral, that is going to be your thigh. Then we have the auxiliary. Your auxiliary is going to be your armpit, okay? We have our shin, which is our tibia or tibial um, bone there. And then we have anterior elbow. So think of anterior is before. So anterior, so you have your um, elbow and anterior of your elbow is going to be right here, your antecubital, okay? The po posterior um, knee is going to be your popliteal. So think of that pop, imagine popping your knee back. Okay, so popliteal is the thing that pop from behind. Okay, now we have your distal and proximal. So distal is that distance away from the center of your body. Okay, so your fingers are distal to your shoulders. Okay, but now if you have what is closer to the center of your body, your, your proximal would be close in that proximity. So your shoulders are proximal to the hand. Okay. Now, physiology versus anatomy. So physiology, think of that function, physiology function of the process of the body, whereas anatomy is a structure and organization of the body parts. So think of Anna. Anna likes to be um, very organized, so she likes to arrange things. So that anatomy is the structure and organization, okay? Now, going back and thinking to Biology 189, we learned that cells are a fundamental building blocks of all living things, okay? So make sure you know that. Now, our directional terms. So ventral, think of the view. So ventral towards the front, okay? So think of that view from the front. So the ventral or the anterior our planes. And so this is one way how I would remember them. So your sagittal, and your sagittal is what goes through the, divides your body from left and right half. So your sagittal is the side by side, okay? Sagittal side by side. Your coronal, so think of where your crown goes. Your coronal goes right there. So it's what that plane that divides the front and back, okay? So your coronal front and back. And your transverse is right where you have your belly button, and it divides the top and to the bottom, okay? Now we have our thoracic cavity. So thoracic cavity is this area right here. So it contains the heart, lung, esophagus, trachea. So um, one, um, one word for that would be the hilt, okay? No, don't that word. Now we have the abdominal pelvic quadrant. So make sure you know these. This is going to be specifically good information to know, especially once you go into AMP2, because you have to know what is in each quadrant, what will you find in those uh, quadrants. So right upper quadrant, um, left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, right uh, left lower quadrant, okay? <laughs> the muscular system function. So the muscular system, provides that movement, protection, support, and maintains that body heat. I know whenever I was doing my anatomy class, I always got so tricked on this because I always would think, I would see this and I would say, hmm, what would provide that movement, that protection, that support? Well, that sounds like the skeletal system. But the reason why it is a muscular system is not only because it provides that body heat, but also because a lot of the muscles in the muscular system aid to support and to are linked with bone and they're aid to protect us and to support us, okay? So muscular system maintains that body heat, remember that, but it also doesn't provide that movement and that protection and that support, okay? Our lymphatic system. So our lymphatic system provides defense against infections, disease. So our lymph, lymph defense, think of, like an army fighting this disease, okay? So our lymphatic system. 
homeostasis. So homeostasis is maintaining that stability, internal and external changes. So this is one word that you're going to see all throughout your nursing career. So think of your homies, they make you feel like home, and so you act normal around them, right? Or your home is where you have everything the way you want it, right? But somebody else's home might be completely different than your own because everybody's homeostasis is different. So from patient A or patient one can be completely different. Their normality can be completely different than patient number three. So maybe the blood pressure for patient number one is you know, 120 over 80, and that's their normality, but patient number two, 110 over, um, you know, 70 is their normality, okay? Functions of the epithelial tissue. So the function of the epithelial tissue is to protect, observe, secrete, and excrete. So think of, this is actually supposed to be PACE. <laughs> so protects, absorbs, secretes, and excretes, okay? Types of epithelial tissue. So we have squamous, cuboidal, and columnar. Okay. Squamous, think of something squishy. So it's just squamous. You have that one layer, and simple would be that one layer. Stratified is multiple layers. So there's strong and it has a whole bunch of layers. Cuboidal, think of that cube, cubes for cuboidal. And then you have columnar. So think of the columns that would be columnar. Okay. Now we have connective tissue. So dense connective tissue holds bones together. So think of something connecting, coming together. It's like a glue holding things together. That is connective tissue. Now areolar tissue, these are kind of nerves, so it's not that connected. So if you blow through, you can feel the air going through. So think of areolar or airy, so it's loose connective tissue. Bone cells. So bone cells, you have osteocytes. So these are cells and bones. So osteo -O for bone. So osteocells, uh, osteocytes, they're pretty much just mature bone cells. So think of the site of bone. If you're looking at a site of the bones, they're all very mature, okay? Osteoblast is whenever they're building. So they're blasting off to build. So think of a, a build bone. So they blast like a builder putting things together, okay? So we have bone builder here, building and blasting. Then we have cardiac muscle. So we have intercorrelated discs. So these are found in the cardiac muscle only. Um, intercorrelated or inter are like a link, linking muscles and cells together. Okay. Nervous tissue. So the location of this would be found in the brain and the spinal cord. So a little mnemonic for this would be brain and spine are nervous all the time. Okay, so that is where you find your nervous tissue. Now we have pericarditis. So let's break these root words down. So peri is around, cardio is our heart, itis is inflammation. So that would be inflammation around the heart, okay? So it's good to know those root words. So make sure you're studying those. Pathophysiology. So pathophysiology is a class that you will eventually take for your nursing prereqs. So pathophysiology is the study of disease or the study of homeostasis imbalances, okay? So homeostatic imbalances, but thinking back homeostasis is our normality, so we're studying what's not normal, okay? Types of bones. So we have irregular bone. So this would be primarily our vertebrae. Um, so irregular, it doesn't fit anywhere. It doesn't fit any standard or shape. And then we have our long bone. So think of your diaphysis. So you have your diaphysis is all down and all the way long and strong. And um, I know this isn't going to be covered on this midterm, but it's good to know information. So epiphysis, think of epinephrine. Whenever you have epinephrine, you just go up or epi, you're up. So it's going to be on those on either or sides of that long bone, okay? Now we have foramen. So foramen is a hole. So a hole in the bone. So think of, um, so here we have the occipital, it has that hole, that would be a foreman. Or you can think of it in construction, so or foreman in construction, they are 
putting and uh, making sure everything's going together to build holes or make holes in everything. Okay. Osteocytes in lacunae. So cells and bones, they live in tiny spaces in a lacunae. So think of lacoon or a cocoon for a cell. So they're a cocoon, you have all the, your living cells, and then they turn into a butterfly, right? Bone growth and repair. So we have your periosteum. So this aids in bone growth and repair. So periosteum is a protector. It protects and helps bones grow. Our skull bones. So we have a, our occipital. So occipital, think of the O in the back. So our temporal. So temporals, your temporals right over here on this side. And then our parietal. So think of your parents. They pat you in the head right over here. It's going to be your parietal. And then you have your mandible for your mouth, your corona where your crone go, crown goes to so this right here, and your frontal, your frontal lobe where your frontal right here and your front. Um, manibrium. So this is located at the top of the sternum. So remember, you have your sternum. It's going to be right at that top, a little little dot right there. Okay. Your spinal bones. So you have your thoracic spine. So thrown in the middle of the back your limbs and legs. So we have your ulna and your radius. So foramen bone, so think of your ulna is going to make that U-turn in the inside, inner side, and your radius is the outer part, okay? Your patella, another word for that is going to be kneecap or your pedal on your knee. You have your tibia and fibula. So tibia is that tall, bone in the middle and then you have your fibula that floats around on the outside okay your calcaneus so this is going to be your heel bone so think of that c look at that little c right there your calcaneus or c if you think of so it's going to be your heel bone remember ligaments are bone to bone and tendons are muscle to bone so memory check to remember is ligaments they link together and they're both L's, so they link together, bones together. Um, and then we have tendons. So tendons have tension between muscle and bone, okay? Muscles to remember. So your trapezius, your traps, so the upper back and neck muscles. So the traps are trapping in the shoulders. Gastronemius, so your calf muscle. And think of like a, a balloon. I like to think of it that way because it kind of is shaped like a balloon. You have your deltoid, so your shoulder muscle, your pectoralis major, it's going to be your chest muscle, gluteus maximus, your buttocks muscle, your axial skeleton, so this is your sacrum, part of the axial, it's part of the axial skeleton. Um, the sac sacrum um, is the center of the body and it holds everything together. And then last but not least, we have muscle contraction. So troponin binds calcium to allow muscle contraction. So mnemonic for this would be troponin. Think of a trigger of contractions or your troops, sending out your troops, troops united, let's go. So they're triggering that contraction, okay? All righty. So that is it for this uh, midterm review. If you have any questions, please let me know. And if you would like a quiz for that, um, I can put it down below if you guys would like to. Okay. Um, happy studying and good luck in your midterms. You got this.